America's passenger railroad, Amtrak, doesn't really have the best reputation for being the most modern way to travel. Between a severe lack of funding, aging equipment, and regulatory issues, it's clear that Amtrak has experienced quite a bit of hardship over the years. Luckily, the 2020s have seen an unprecedented amount of funding and support for the railroad, including a handful of massive equipment replacements. Today, we'll be going over some of the biggest fleet replacements Amtrak is undertaking and discussing the recent developments surrounding them. Avelia Liberty Amtrak has a long history of troublesome European high-speed trains. Perhaps the best example is the Acela 2 project, which since 2016 has been expected to usher in a new era of high-speed rail travel in the Northeast. Since the millennium, Amtrak's Acela has been their flagship route, hitting speeds of up to 150 miles per hour between Boston and Washington, D.C., but by the mid-2010s, the Acela train sets weren't looking too flagship. With dated interiors, frequent mechanical failures, and sometimes more extreme issues like train separations, it was becoming clear that they were ready for retirement. In 2016, the Acela replacement project began with Amtrak contracting French manufacturer Alstom to build a fleet of second-generation Acelas. These trains would be an Americanized version of the Avelia high-speed train set, which would be built concurrently with Trains for France's SNCF. By the summer of 2016, Alstom revealed renderings and specifications for this new train, which would be called the Avelia Liberty. Boasting an engineered top speed of 220 miles per hour, the Liberty would be by far the most modern train America had ever seen. Everything about the Liberty would one-up the original Acelas. Aside from top speed, the Liberty would be more efficient, more reliable, and carry more passengers, all in a spacious, modern, and ADA-compliant interior. Additionally, with this order, Amtrak planned to expand Acela service, ordering 28 trains to replace the original 20. These 28 trains were planned to enter service just five years later, in 2021, replacing the 20 original Acelas by the end of 2022. By 2020, despite the pandemic, the first two prototype trains were completed right on time and testing began. Unfortunately, as testing commenced, a litany of issues resurfaced. Power car roofs and windows would take on water whenever it rained, panographs displayed premature damage, the hydraulics used for tilting would leak, trains were prematurely rusting, electronics were corroding, onboard computer and signaling systems would constantly malfunction, and perhaps most alarmingly, windows would spontaneously shatter. Across the pond, things weren't much better, with French Avelia Horizons experiencing similar issues. Alas, testing continued, and slowly, some of the issues would resolve, but not fast enough. 2021, the planned entry to service came and went, and so did 2022, and then 2023. Issues persisted, and a couple of trains were even returned to Alstom's factory to be modified. As of right now, eight trains have been delivered to Amtrak, with a handful sitting and collecting dust in Philadelphia. It's gotten so bad that Amtrak doesn't have the space to store these trains anymore, so a few completed trains are sitting in a remote yard in upstate New York. Currently, Alstom is working to fix these trains' countless issues, and the current plan is to put the first trains in service in late 2024. Until then, the Acela 2 project will remain an exciting but somewhat frustrating topic for rail fans and travelers alike. Meanwhile, while Alstom sorts out the Acela 2s, Amtrak faces the challenge of maintaining its aging fleet of original Acela train sets. These 20-year-old trains are fragile and spare parts are hard to come by. In order to keep them from literally falling apart, Amtrak has taken to dismantling one of its Acela trains for spare parts, once again illustrating how urgently these Acela 2s are needed. Luckily, pending necessary modifications and retesting, the Acela 2s will hopefully give these worn-out trains a much-needed break. When the Avelia Liberty eventually does enter service, it'll be the most technologically advanced train in North America, albeit almost a decade old. ALC-42 Locomotives While the Northeast Corridor can support high-speed, high-frequency, electrified trains, unfortunately the majority of Amtrak's network is run by diesel locomotives, all of which are 20 and 30 years old. This is a P42DC, a member of the General Electric Genesis series, otherwise known as the backbone of Amtrak's fleet. Out of Amtrak's 43 existing routes, 28 rely on some variant of the Genesis, and all too much as these engines are well past the end of their useful service lives. By the mid-2010s, Amtrak's state-funded routes began to acquire brand new Siemens Charger locomotives. Classified as SC44s, these modern diesels adhered to strict EPA Tier 4 emission standards, were more efficient, accelerated and stopped faster, and were more powerful than their predecessors, leading Amtrak to look into long-distance variants. In late 2018, 
Amtrak announced that it will be ordering 75 Siemens Chargers to replace its fleet of Genesis locomotives. These locomotives would be just as efficient and achieve the same low emissions rating as the SC-44s but would be better fit for long distance trains with a larger fuel tank and a slightly detuned lower stress engine to allow for longer service intervals. In 2021, the first long distance charger was completed and delivered to Amtrak, classified as an ALC-42 or Amtrak long distance charger with 4200 horsepower. As an added bonus, Amtrak took this opportunity to modernize its image, debuting a brand new Phase 6 and later Phase 7 paint scheme. After testing throughout late 2021, the first charger entered service in February of 2022 on the Empire Builder between Chicago and Seattle. Since 2022, Siemens ALC 42s have been steadily delivered, and as of right now, just under 50 have been built. While the locomotives have demonstrated overall reliability, challenges have surfaced in adverse weather conditions, particularly in cold climates. The technologically advanced control systems, while beneficial, seem to be the charger's Achilles heel, rendering the issues inoperable if just one small system stops working. Despite these concerns, Amtrak remains optimistic, increasing their order from 75 to 125 in 2022, anticipating that Siemens Mobility will address their issues with both software and hardware updates in the future. The ALC42 represents a new era for Amtrak with an increased focus on sustainability, efficiency, and reliability. The railroad's new chargers will not only improve Amtrak on paper, but it will also give it a striking modern new look. In 2026, Siemens will deliver the final ALC42, allowing for the retirement of the final Genesis locomotives, which at that point will be about 34 years old. Amtrak Aero Train Sets Much as the Siemens Charger locomotives proved themselves on state-supported Amtrak routes before being used on long-distance trains, Siemens Venture Cars started on state corridors before graduating to mainline service. The Venture came about in the early 2010s, surprisingly not with Amtrak. In 2014, a privately funded inner city rail project known as All Aboard Florida contracted Siemens Mobility to construct a small fleet of modern diesel train sets. These trains, an Americanized version of the Siemens Viaggio Comfort rail car from Europe, would soon enter service on Brightline between Miami and West Palm Beach. At the same time, a multi-state consortium placed an order for next generation bi-level passenger cars built in a joint venture between Sumitomo and Nippon Shario, two experienced Japanese rail car manufacturers. Unfortunately, after countless project delays, and later the complete failure of one of the prototypes, the state consortium cut their losses and cancelled the order. A new order was placed with Siemens Mobility in 2017, and since then, venture cars have been built for state-supported routes in the Midwest and Northern California. In late 2021, following the delivery of initial batches of state-owned ventures, Amtrak unveiled an ambitious plan to invest $7.3 billion into a new system-wide fleet of trains manufactured by Siemens Mobility. Throughout 2021 and 2022, these new train sets were designed, culminating in the reveal of Amtrak Aero at the end of 2022. Unlike current trains, Aeros are complete train sets with dual-mode locomotives that seamlessly transition between electrified and non-electrified territory without requiring a locomotive switch. This is all thanks to an APV or auxiliary power vehicle, a passenger car with either a pantograph for overhead electricity or a battery compartment. The initial order comprised of a total of 73 trains in four different variations. First are the Washington DOT trains, which are the only ones that don't incorporate hybrid technology. These eight trains will replace interim Horizon cars, which replaced Talgo 6 trains on the Cascades in 2020. Trains will be made up of one Charger locomotive, five Venture cars, and one Venture cab car, allowing for quick turnarounds. When they enter service in 2026, they'll run alongside newer Talgo 8 trains, allowing Amtrak to expand Cascade service to support this rapidly expanding rail corridor. Next up is the bread and butter of this order, the Northeast Corridor trains. Coming in 6-car and 8-car variants, the Northeast Corridor trains will replace Amfleet 1 cars, which at this point are almost half a century old. Amfleet 1s are easily the most important cars on Amtrak's roster, and this order will allow for their long overdue replacement on the Carolinian, Downeaster, Keystone, Palmetto, Pennsylvanian, Vermonter, and Northeast Regional. As mentioned before, there will be two variations of these trains, those being the 6-car and the 8-car variants. Aside from the difference in train lengths, these trains will consist of an ALC42E, a Siemens Charger locomotive capable of operating off electricity. Behind the ALC42E will be the first passenger car, known as an APV. This APV or power bus will operate just as any other passenger car while using a pantograph to capture electricity from overhead wires. 
Behind the APV will be a few regular passenger cars, and then a cab car. Overall, these train sets will make for quick turnarounds, no power change for electrified zones, lower emissions operations when running on diesel, and most interestingly, the partial retirement of Amtrak's dedicated electric locomotives. Aside from a small fleet for long distance trains running on the Northeast Corridor, Amtrak will most likely sell off their ACS-64 electrics to other railroads. Perhaps most importantly, these aero trains will increase reliability, passenger comfort, and safety. Currently, the Amfleet 1s are some of the oldest and most important cars on Amtrak, and the Aeros will serve as their long overdue replacement. Finally, the last group of trains will be used on the Adirondack, Empire Service, Ethan Allen Express, and Maple Leaf. These trains will be nearly identical to the six car Northeast Corridor trains, with the exception of their overhead electric capabilities. Though they'll still feature an APV car behind the locomotive, the upstate New York trains will feature a small battery compartment that recharges in motion. This will be used in order to go full electric within New York's Penn Station tunnels, in addition to providing extra power when accelerating. Once again, these trains will replace vintage amp fleets used on New York services, in addition to the aging P32AC dual-mode locomotives. By the summer of 2023, the first aero cars were under construction, and by August, Amtrak increased their order from 73 to 83 trains in total. This would break down to 26 six-car Northeast Corridor trains, 32 eight-car Northeast Corridor trains, 17 upstate New York trains, and eight six-car Cascades trains. Just a few months later, in October, the first aero car was revealed, marking a crucial milestone in the project. Though unfurnished, this modern rail car will be tested by Siemens Mobility before being delivered to Amtrak in 2025. After that, the first Aeros will enter their testing phase on Amtrak, and in mid-2026, the first Aeros will enter service on the Cascades. Following the Washington trains, the Northeast Corridor will start receiving trains, and by 2030, Amtrak will take delivery to the upstate New York trains. The full completion of the Aero project is anticipated around 2031, with a grand total of 77 locomotives and 562 railcars being delivered. This monumental undertaking is poised to modernize Amtrak's fleet, allowing for the retirement of some of its oldest cars and ensuring a more sustainable and technologically advanced future for rail travel in the United States. Temporary Cab Cars as Amtrak awaits the debut of its new aero trains starting in 2026, it's faced with the challenge of temporarily replacing some of its oldest cars. To bridge the gap until the aero trains are operational, Amtrak has devised a makeshift replacement strategy that involves the repurposing of locomotives to service cab cars. Currently, Amtrak relies on a fleet of 16 cab cars rebuilt from 1960s era Metroliners. These cab cars can be seen on heavily traveled routes such as the Keystone, Springfield Shuttle, and Valley Flyer, all of which are routes that routinely hit speeds as high as 90, or in the case of the Keystone, 125 miles per hour. These Metroliner cars, though very reliable, are clearly well past their prime, and Amtrak wants to retire them as soon as possible. In order to do so, Amtrak is doing something somewhat unconventional. This here is an HHP-8 locomotive. Built in 1998, these electrics were plagued with constant mechanical issues leading to an early retirement in 2014. Since then, they've sat on Amtrak property awaiting their fate. Luckily, the majority of the reliability issues stemmed from their powertrain, so as control cars, the HHP-8 show quite a bit of promise. Originally built for high-speed operations, the HHP-8, or hippos as they're called by rail fans, are an ideal fit for use as cab cars on routes that demand high-speed capabilities. Currently, a small fleet of eight are undergoing a comprehensive transformation process with the removal of roof gear, rendering them completely non-powered. This temporary roster will be reclassified as HHPC and renumbered to 9750 through 9757. With the first unit, number 9750, beginning the testing process in mid-November, the HHPC debut isn't far off. As briefly mentioned before, they will replace Metroliner cab cars beginning on the Keystone and possibly the Springfield Shuttle and Valley Flyer as soon as 2024. In addition to the HHP-8s, rumors are circulating, many of which are from reliable sources, that Amtrak is considering rebuilding a handful of Genesis locomotives into cab cars. This potential move is aimed at replacing vintage F40-based NPCUs and would likely consist of 20 P42DCs being rebuilt to P42-Cs. Ultimately, this will be a temporary quirk of Amtrak's fleet, providing rail fans with one final opportunity to shoot the HHP-8s before they're inevitably scrapped. When they start showing up as cab cars, definitely shoot them while you can. The 2020s have already proven a transformative time for Amtrak, but as they continue, the fleet of trains will continue to change and become more standardized. 
The gradual phasing out of Amfleet 1s, though a prolonged process due to their sheer numbers, will be the biggest fleet rejuvenation in the company's 50 plus year history, and while original Acellas appear to have some time left, the Acela 2 train sets will soon become the new face of Amtrak's flagship route. Amidst the ongoing changes, the P-42s, possibly the most iconic locomotives on Amtrak's fleet, are expected to gradually fade away over the next few years. Despite changes and delays, a few years from now, Amtrak will look completely different and this will go down as one of the most interesting eras in Amtrak's history.